OK. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Nelson, and I am here to talk about learning PowerShell by building an alarm clock, a really cool alarm clock. So um, I've given this talk uh, back in 2017 for VMTN, and it was really popular. And uh, I thought I'd revise it a little bit. So um, I've got a deck, and uh, but I'm not going to show it. I'm going to show like three slides, and then I'm going to go right into the demo. So this is me. Um, all you really need to be concerned about on this is that this is how to get a hold of me. And of course, I love beer, barbecue, and gadgets. That's it. It's all you need to know about that slide, OK? This is another important slide. If you need anything from my presentations over the last 10 years, including this one, get this QR code. It goes right out to my GitHub. All of my code is there. All my presentations are there. It's also going to be available on the VMTN YouTube channel. And you got three, two, one. You don't get it? You don't get it? OK, we're not next. All right, so PowerShell, people. If any of the people know how to use PowerShell already. OK, do you really know how to use PowerShell, or are you just using it because somebody told you you had to use it? Yeah, I get it. I get it. So there is actually a couple different versions of PowerShell. Uh, right now, we have version uh, 5.1, which is available when you like install server. OK, that comes default. And then you have two other versions. And I'm clipping, and it's really slow. You have version 6.x and version 7.x. Uh, version 6.x, um, you can act like that never happened. Okay? Microsoft would love it if you just forgot that that ever happened. Okay? Because it was full of mistakes, it was full of errors, um, and they want you to stick with 7.x. So if you use Windows 10 or Windows 11, you're going to go with 7.x. If you're on Windows Server, it's going to be 5.1. Two different versions, two different kinds of frameworks behind them. So I'm going to skip ahead to a couple slides. You'll have all the slides to look at, of course, if, when you at your leisure. But uh, I'm going to skip right ahead here. So these are not the slides you're looking for, OK? Because you only give me 12 minutes. I can't like hit all this stuff. All right, let's talk about the syntax. This is very important. When you work with PowerShell, there's a specific syntax you have to follow, OK? First thing is you have to have a commandlet. That is actually commandlet, C-M-D-L-E-T. It is always in this, in this, <laughs> not quite sure, it's a verb noun. It always comes out verb noun. Okay, you're either going to do a get, you're going to do a set, you're going to do something like that, a new, a create, and then it's going to be a noun after that. All right? Then you're going to have something called a parameter afterwards. All right? Then you're going to have something called a parameter value. It's going to give a value to that parameter. After that, you're going to have something called a switch. All right, a switch is basically an on or off. All right, and then you have something called a common parameter, which is common across all commandlets. All right, everything from here over is not required. This is the only thing that's required is that commandlet. Okay. Basically, if you think of commandlets, it's just a command in PowerShell. Run standalone, takes object input, and gives object output. It's very critical to remember in PowerShell. You get objects, you return objects. It's not like you get like uh, text and you return text. These are actually objects that are held in memory. Come on. Parameters, I'm not going to go through it. You can read the slide. Pipelining, taking one commandlet, OK? the objects that are returned by the commandlet, and piping it to another commandlet. So another commandlet can use that output, and I'll show that in my, in my demo. Commonly called a one-liner. If you ever hear somebody call a one-liner, that's usually a pipeline. Okay. Functions is what we're going to be using. Wow, that's cool. Uh, we're going to be actually showing when we create our alarm clock. <clears throat> when you think of a function, excuse me, <clears throat> when you think of a function, all it is is a list of statements that you run like you entered them. So if you entered like six different statements, okay, and you type them all out on each, each individual command line, you just create a function that does the same thing. So you're, instead of typing them all out in each individual, individual command line, you're encapsulating them all into a single function, as they call it, like this. This is a very simple function. 
This is a little bit more complex function. All right, it's just saying if Firefox.exe exists, get the process. If it doesn't, equals no, then say no Firefox process is present. Pretty simple. All right, um, and to run the function, you have to call the name. So I would do a get Firefox process to run that. I'm just going to use this spacebar because that clicker isn't working very well. We're going to actually end up building a module, and I'll show that in the demonstration, and a module manifest. And these are the last things, the core commandlets I think everyone should know. Get help gets all the help for a command. Update help updates all the help for commandlets. A get command tells you everything about the command. A show command will give you a UI, believe it or not. PowerShell is not just a CLI. And get member will give you all the different things that you can pull about that command. And then update module, keep you up to date. All right, and then of course, that's how to get a hold of me. So let's watch the demo. And I'm off the screen there. How do I get it back? I don't know why I'm cut off on the top there. It shows on the screen here, but it's off the screen on there. OK, that's going to be a kind of a problem. All right, well, no, here we go. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm actually doing a get process. This is a commandlet. So what it's going to do is get process. It's going to show me all the processes that are running. I just ran a PowerShell commandlet. Real, real simple, OK? And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the show command. That's where it takes a commandlet and will give you a UI. So if you're really kind of not you know, too sure about the CLI thing, you can actually bring up a UI that will allow you to enter the information. And then you can do a run, copy, or cancel. So instead of having to do it from command line, go ahead and do it from this UI. It says show hyphen command and then the command name. All right, I'm going to clear the screen. And then from there, I'm going to go and I'm going to get process and I'm going to pipe the, uh, start a notepad or get member, I'm sorry. So get member is going to show you, if I could spell it right, get member is going to show you all the different properties that you can pull out from get process. All the process names, you know, page uh, threads, start time, start info. This is all the information you can get from just that one commandlet. Now I'm going to run notepad.exe. You'll see notepad start up. Obviously, I minimize it to the taskbar to get the screen back so you won't see it, but it actually is running, and I'll prove that because I'll do a get process. And I'll do get process notepad.exe. And it's going to error on me. Why does it error? Because task manager doesn't understand the .exe. It only understands the name, notepad. So it sees that. It tells you that it's running. So I do a get process notepad, and I pipe it and say, OK, if you see that, stop it. It goes ahead, gets the process notepad. It's not there anymore because I stopped it with the pipeline. All right, so we're going to start our alarm clock. Um, I'm sorry, we're going to go help first. I want you to understand help. So when you, you can do any command with get hyphen help and then the command line. And what it does is it gives you a full context help. The one, the hyphen full command will give you everything. Blow it up. All right, another really useful one is hyphen examples because that gives you like examples that the author can, you can really use. Okay, as you can see here in get process, they give you a boatload of, uh, they give up to nine examples, see? They give you a boatload of them. And it's really helpful when you don't know PowerShell that well. So let's take a look at our alarm clock. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at sleep. Okay, or I'm sorry, get module. Get module is going to tell me what modules I have loaded in my session. This is what I have loaded. Get module hyphen list available is going to show all the modules I have available on my machine to, lo to load. Now, a module is something that 
brings in commandlets. It brings in, if you work with Dell, if you work with HP, you work with VMware, Power CLI. It is a module. All right? So you can import any of these. Just like we're creating an alarm clock, we can import that module. So I'm importing a module right now that's called WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. When I import that module, I'm doing a verbose, which tells me that it actually imports all these different functions. Just like we're creating for the alarm clock, we're creating a function. Enter, export, get, invoke, remove, set, verb, noun again, remember? All those commandlets are now available to me inside of PowerShell. All right. So now we're going to actually get to the alarm clock. Start sleep. Of course, with an alarm clock, you have to set a value for sleep. Start sleep is a native PowerShell command, and it actually has a variable called seconds. So what we want to do is find out what the definition of start sleep is on an alias, so we can just use the term sleep instead of start sleep. It's just like you know you can type you know uh, an alias to dir just by typing d. All right, if you want to do that. Instead of doing start sleep, just do sleep. One, two, three, the prompt comes back. Okay, it slept for three seconds. I'm doing a sleep for three seconds, and I'm going to tell it that after three seconds, I want you to beep once. Okay? So, one, two, three. You heard the beep. Now I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do something called a while loop. What that does is it just keeps looping through it. Okay, it just keeps on looping through and saying, until you tell me to stop, i.e. hit control C, I'm gonna just keep on beeping. So, one, two, three. And then I hit control C. All right, so that's your alarm, right? You just set the seconds and you set your alarm. Well, let's take this a little different route. Let's try and add some really cool stuff to the alarm. We're going to first put it into a function, and that function is going to go into memory. Functions can be put directly into memory so you can access them from anything. All right? I'm creating the function, the same thing I just wrote, and all I have to do is once it's a function, I just have to type start alarm clock. That's all I have to do. I don't have to write out any other command, nothing. It just goes in as that, and it'll do the same thing I just did. Kind of a shortened way of doing it. Now, you're saying, how do I know that function exists? Because PowerShell has something called PS Drive. PS Drive kind of contains all the stuff that you know, PowerShell knows about, and one of them is functions. It contains the drive space, you know, the drives, the variables, all that. I'm like, does my function actually exist? Yes, it does. Because I can look at all the different functions, and then I can actually go here and tell it to just tell me what one have the name alarm in it, and there's my function. So I know PowerShell knows it exists, which is a good thing. So now we're going to take that, and we're going to add a parameter. And we're going to say, I'm going to be able to do a start alarm clock, but I want to be able to put a number of seconds afterwards. So instead of three seconds, I want to be able to put 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever. And you should be able to do that. Start alarm clock, space, and then whatever number you want there. And that function should execute. So you got one, two, three. Okay. So now I'm going to take it a little bit different. And uh, I'm going to start another alarm clock. And that alarm clock, so once I start typing here, I'm trying. <laughs> Trust me. Um, how many people, uh, you got to love Star Wars, right? So I'm going to do one that actually has a little Star Wars twist to it, but it's telling me I can't run it. And that's because it's a PS1 file, a PowerShell file. You have to go to what's called a dot source to do a PowerShell file. And by dot source in it, you have to do that dot slash. That's the only one you, way you can run a, power, uh, uh, a PowerShell uh, file, a PS1 file. So when I do that, execute that. Wake up, Luke. May the force be with you. By the way, Darth Vader is your father. (laughs) 
All can be done within PowerShell. Now, some folks say, you know, I'm sick and tired of this Star Wars stuff. I'm tired of you geeks though, always geeking out about this Star Wars stuff. Well, some people actually like different stuff. So let's try this. Wake up, Mr. Phelps. Your mission, Jim, if you choose to accept it, is to get up and move. This alarm will self-destruct in 10 seconds. These are all things that you can do inside of PowerShell. Speech synthesis, noises, all kinds of fun stuff. But basically what we just did is we built an alarm clock, encapsulated it into, be able to put it inside of a PS1 file, and take that PS1 file, and we'd be able to put it into a module. Okay? Um, that's all I have time for. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.